Hello everyone, my name is Mark Wood. I'm the Senior Product Manager at GitLab for the Plan Certify section, which has a component of requirements management. Uh, we've made a lot of updates to requirements management over the last few releases, and I wanted to create this video to show the capabilities and powers that are currently available to our users who are interested in performing requirements management and utilizing requirements for their particular project. Uh, this is a demo project I created to kind of highlight these opportunities. Um, it is up to date currently with the latest version of GitLab that we've released. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through a little bit about what this project actually does. So this project simulates a situation where there are two tests that are running in the test folder. And these tests will either provide a pass or fail status based on whether or not they pass or fail. Uh, because this is a demo, they're just outputting pass fail right now, but that could obviously be updated to be, you know, full testing of your source code. These requirements, which we can see over here on the left side, there's a list of requirements. These are linked to the test through the use of requirements trace matrix. So if I show you the requirements mat trace matrix, this is a simple CSV file that can be generated through any number of testing tools or, you know, other means. It can be generated manually. Um, most regulated industries are required to have a requirements trace matrix. And what we're looking for here is yeah, the requirement ID, so one through eight, because there are eight requirements here, and which test is supposed to be covering that requirement. The tests are run in the test stage of the CICD pipeline, and they output results files. The dot results are, yeah, it's like test name dot results files is how I've chosen to do it. And these are stored in artifacts in the test jobs. And by default, GitLab will pass the artifacts from one stage to the next stage. So the results files are passed from the test stage of the pipeline to the requirements check stage of the pipeline. Once the requirements check stage of the pipeline begins running, it will only run if there's a commit to the master branch. That's how I have it configured. You don't wanna update your requirements if you're doing you know, work to a side branch. Um, it runs a simple Python script that I've created called parse coverage, which utilizes that trace matrix I just showed and will correlate pass fail status of the requirements. So basically this is the Python script. Uh, it's not overly complicated. It takes in the trace matrix and it basically looks for all the dot, the dot results files and makes a Python dictionary of pass fail based on the tests. So there's two tests that I'm running. So one passes and one fails in this demonstration. And then it will go ahead and generate an appropriate JSON output from that by correlating those tests through the trace matrix to the requirements themselves. Uh, based on this correlation, the JSON is output, and the JSON is passed into the requirements reporting functionality that we have documented here in this requirements report feature of the CIC pipeline. And I've also put a little helper here. The requirements report feature of the CIC pipelines expects properly formatted JSON in the following format, basically just the requirement number and then passed or failed. So in this example right here, what we're saying is that requirement six has passed, the testing for requirement six has passed, and therefore requirement six should be marked as satisfied in the requirements list. Uh, it's also showing that requirement eight, the testing for that has failed, and therefore requirement eight should be marked as failed in the requirements list. So let's take a look at the requirements list. Right here we see that I have eight requirements, one through eight, and you'll note that they, some of them are satisfied and some of them are failed. And this is based on the testing that has been performed against those requirements. These are just sort of made up requirements for a fictitious um, shopping experience that people may be having in their application. We will also go and take a look at the repository itself. We can take a look at the files. We have two tests and we have this trace matrix. So we'll go ahead and update the trace matrix here. So if I click on this, we'll see that right now we're saying requirement one, two, three, four, five down the left column. And we're saying that one is first test, two is second test. And I believe right now I have first test is passing and second test is failing in my testing scripts. So if we look at our requirements, that will actually correlate because we see that requirement one is satisfied, two and three are failing. And if we go back and we take a look at that file in the trace matrix here, actually I have it in a separate tab we'll see that one is associated with first test and two and three are associated with second test. So we see right now that since second test is failing, requirements two and three are marked as failed in our requirements list. So if I go ahead and edit this, I can come in here and say, okay, 
maybe we made a mistake. Maybe requirement two is really should be correlated to first test. And I'll go ahead and commit that. And we'll say we're going to update the trace matrix to change requirement two. And I'll go ahead and create a new branch. Here's my new branch. Here's my new merge request. Um, you know, basic description. Did we correlate it with first test? I believe we did. I will sign it to myself and I will go ahead and submit it. I can actually verify that yes, we moved it from second test to first test, which is just fine. So knowing that, we'll see that a pipeline was kicked off. Now, the way I have my GitLab CI YAML file, I'll go ahead and open that here in a separate window so we can look at that as we're browsing through things. We can go ahead and see that a pipeline is currently running. We'll go ahead and open that pipeline and show that we're just running both tests, which is exactly what we expect. Since I'm not merging to master, I'm merging to a separate branch, we don't want to update the requirements over here. That would make no sense because this change may get rejected. We may never actually merge this and to update the requirements list wouldn't work. Well, we have that configured right here such that the check requirements stage of the pipeline only runs if we're referencing the master. So that's how this works. And you could obviously change this. You could have multiple different branches. You can name your branches however you want. This is very configurable based on our current CI CD pipeline configurations, which is pretty advanced. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this merge request and we're going to go ahead and refresh it and see that this pipeline has passed. We get a little checkbox and I can go ahead and merge. So I'm going to go ahead and click the merge button. What happens when I do that is a separate pipeline is spawned to perform the merge. And you'll see right here, the pipeline kicks off. And we see that first test and second test, again, are running. The tests are rerunning with the merge to master. And we'll see that I should have updated, if we go back to, where was I, tests? No, we were in the trace matrix, weren't we? Trace matrix. We'll see that I've updated number two to be second test. Now it's showing first test still because the merge hasn't finalized yet. But if we look at our merge request, we can see that I have a merge request to change requirement two, and we're changing it from second test to first test. And since we know that first test is failing this in, the, in this example, once this completes, we should see requirement two in our list here go from failed to satisfied. So if we go back to our pipeline, we'll see that these two have passed. And for demonstration purposes, I have this pipeline set to be manual run. So I actually have to click go. That way I can kind of show what's going on. You could automate this. There's no reason it needs to be a manual step unless you want it to be. I'll go ahead and hit go on this and it's going to take the artifacts from these two and it's going to run that Python script. It's going to parse things. And it's going to update my requirements list based on that. So we'll give this a second to run. And once it completes, we'll be able to go and check our requirements list again and verify that requirement two, now that's associated with a passing test is now passing. The job says it succeeded, which is excellent. So we'll go back to our requirement list. And we'll note here now that requirement two is passing, which is excellent. So that's one method of updating. Now let's take a slightly different approach. Let's say that we have a group of developers and testers writing and fixing the tests. So instead of changing the trace matrix, if an error was found there, we're instead going to update our test. So right now, second test is failing. It says failed here. Again, it's a very simplistic version. Let's go ahead and do an update and make this passing. So given that the testers and the developers have updated the test, it's now passing. We're going to go ahead and say, fix second test. We'll create a new branch. Now this new branch, the goal is to fix the second test to make it pass. And they're going to do this as part of their everyday work anyway. So as they update their tests and improve them, they'll start passing. You want to understand the completeness of your product. So you'll be looking at your requirements list and you'll say, Hey, right now on my requirements list, I still have a number of 
failing requirements, which means that our product is not complete yet. We're not done. We need to get done. And the way to get done is to verify that these requirements are met by our product. If we go to our merge request, we'll see that again, as per before, the tests are running in this pipeline. So we can get the results for these tests. We can see if they're passing or failing. It says the job succeeded. Again, I can go ahead and download the, arc, the uh, artifacts. I can check those artifacts. So if there was a huge test report here, I could go ahead and download that and check it. Uh, in this case, it's just that simple script. So we're going to go ahead and merge this into the master. In doing that, we're going to get another pipeline as per before. And this pipeline will go ahead and run the requirements check portion of our pipeline script. So we'll go ahead and look at this pipeline. We'll see that we have, again, the check requirements and we have the test running. We'll let them run to completion. Uh, I also wanted to bring up while these tests are running some of the other features we've added. We now have the ability to export requirements and import requirements. Now currently exporting exports all of the fields, which is fantastic, but we are gonna make that selectable in an upcoming version. So you'll be able to choose which fields get updated in your export. The goal of this is that a software team could use a round robin technique to import requirements from an external source, do their development, test generation, and test development against those requirements within GitLab itself natively. And then once they have completed this and they have a complete set of testing, they have a complete product, and the requirements are satisfied, they can go ahead and export this as an artifact back to either a system team or a higher tiered level in their organization who would take that and utilize that as part of a larger project or a larger proposal. So that enables the software team to work entirely within GitLab and collaborate and utilize all of the wonderful features we have to offer. So if I go back to my pipelines, we'll see hopefully that both tests have passed and they have. We'll go ahead and run the check requirements portion of this. So now that both of the tests have passed and based on our trace matrix, we see that all of the requirements are tied to either test one or test two. And since both are passing, we should see that all of our requirements end up being updated such that they should show passing status. We'll let this run for a second and we'll see where we get. As you can tell right now, we still have these failed because we haven't run our check yet. I'm hoping that that will resolve itself momentarily. So it's running, it's in progress, which is good. And it has succeeded, which is excellent. So if we go back to our requirements list, what we should see is now that all the requirements of the product are satisfied. So our requirement is, or our product is complete. And we could go ahead and as I said before, we could export this to a CSV file and it will actually mail that to my address and as an attachment, and then I could utilize that to export into a different system if you so desired. Thank you so much for your time today. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. I will put, um, be checking the comments for this video. I will also put a link to this repository in the video below, and I would love to see any collaboration or any questions you might have or any feature requests, and I'm always open to talking. So thank you so much for your time today.